Seventy million years ago in Mongolia, there is a vast, dark forest. And in that forest is one of the strangest dinosaurs ever to have lived. It wields the largest claws any animal has ever had. Standing over five meters tall, nine meters long, and weighing nearly six tons, is a Therizinosaurus. Though they are distantly related to theropods, the family that includes the most famous meat-eating dinosaurs, Therizinosaurus is herbivorous. Its intimidating claws are used for moving branches and leaves for it to forage, though they are just as useful for defense and intimidation. This species is the last of its kind, and in a few million years, they too will disappear, their menacing silhouettes against the forest fog, a distant memory. This male is on the move. It is breeding season, and he is moving through his territory to try and find as many females as he can. Despite his size, he makes little noise as he moves through the forest. His demeanor is almost that of a stalking predator. In fact, any species caught unaware of his approach would get quite the shock seeing his massive claws protrude through the thick fog that covers the area in the early morning. As the male walks, the silence is broken not by him crashing through the undergrowth, but by an attempt at theft. An oviraptor guarding her eggs is suddenly set upon by two dromaeosaurs. They aren't attacking the angry mother, they are trying to slip around her and take some of her eggs. The Oviraptor stands above the clutch, snapping and kicking at the two attackers. But the Therizinosaurus does nothing. He could easily scare off the Dromaeosaurus just by walking towards them. But his own task comes first. He leaves the smaller dinosaurs to their fates. He continues to walk through his territory, never stopping to eat or drink. The sun is getting higher, and the fog is beginning to clear, and he is stridden to a more open section of the forest. Therizinosaurus don't have good eyesight, so the wider field of view does little for him. To detect threats, he relies mostly on hearing, and now he was beginning to pick something up. The sounds of fast and light footsteps were approaching. Turning towards the source of the sound, the Therizinosaurus could just make out a flock of approaching Gallimimus. The two meter tall ostrich-like dinosaurs were running in a panic towards the Therizinosaurus. Whether they saw him or not, they gave no sign of changing course. Whatever was chasing them was clearly of greater concern. The Therizinosaurus faced them, claws held down, facing the ground in a relaxed position. Two of the Gallimimus gave the larger dinosaur a wide berth, running to his left side. The third, however, was looking backwards when he nearly ran beak first into the feathered giant. Without warning, the Therizinosaurus flicked its wrists. The meter-long claws on its hands struck the Gallimimus so swift and hard that its body was sent through the air briefly before it collided with a tree. Its limp, mangled form lay still on the ground. Dead. Therizinosaurus stood in silence, looking at the body, as the other Gallimimus veered away from him. Soon the giant saw the smaller dinosaur's pursuers, Tarbosaurus, the region's top predator. It was a mated pair, one male and one female. Both stopped in their tracks when they came face to face with the Therizinosaurus. Though ten meters long, the predators did not engage the tall herbivore, that was now standing eerily silent before them. He only flexed his claws slightly, three of which were dripping with blood. The predators knew that fighting one of these would definitely result in a serious injury or death, and instead the male slowly moved towards the dead Gallimimus, while the female tried to distract the silent giant. The Therizinosaurus kept both Tarbosaurus in his peripheral vision. He watched and waited, his claws now ceasing their movement. The male Tarbosaurus locked eyes with the Therizinosaurus for a brief second, and then he hastily brought his head down and secured the Gallimimus body in his jaws. The Therizinosaurus took in a deep breath, faced the male, and opened his mouth. 
the sound that came out wasn't a roar. It was a shearing scream. The horrific noise that ripped out of the Therizinosaurus' throat tore through the silent forest, and every animal that heard it felt it cut right through them. The Tarbosaurus pair bolted back the way they came, the male struggling to keep up with the Gallimimus dangling in his jaws. The giant herbivore slowly straightened himself. It was once again immobile. A full minute passed before he turned his head and then continued along his previous path. He headed deeper into the forest, and soon even his massive bulk was swallowed by the thick fog. His journey wasn't over, but now the forest was a lot quieter. Welcome back everyone. Today we will be breaking down the creature with the longest claws in the history of the planet, Therizinosaurus. Therizinosaurus belongs to the Therizinosauridae family and is the largest member of this unique group of dinosaurs. They are theropods, closely related to Manoraptorans, but have evolved many unique traits that set them apart from all other dinosaurs, which we will cover shortly. Therizinosaurus got up to 9 meters long, stood 5 meters tall, and weighed up to 5 tons. While we don't have any complete remains for it, there are many closely related species that have helped to fill in what it looked like. The massive claws on its arms could have grown up to 1.5 meters long, making them the largest of any animal ever. After its discovery in 1948, the claws were thought to belong to a species of turtle, it wasn't until decades after that that they realized it belonged to a dinosaur. But what are they used for? While they would have been great for intimidating and perhaps even for defending itself, scientists believe that it used them to simply move plants so that they could browse on them. It's believed that Therizinosaurus simply sat down and then maneuvered leaves towards its beak-like mouth, much like extinct ground sloths. The closest modern similarity that we have are pandas or gorillas. Its hind legs were built similar to sauropods, with all four toes being used to support its weight, unlike in other theropods where the first toe is a dewclaw. It also had a wide pelvis, which would have supported a massive pot belly, perfect for storing and digesting mass amounts of plants. Feather impressions have been found on close relatives of Therizinosaurus, so it likely had them as well. With all these different physical features that seem to come from multiple different dinosaurs, categorizing Therizinosaurus and its close relatives proved to be a multi-decade nightmare that now contains over a dozen species. Now, who amongst you saw this creature for the first time in Jurassic World Dominion? I saw the movie with some friends, and some of them had never even seen or heard of it before. And that awesome scene of it slowly stalking Claire was one of the highlights of the movie. I personally saw Therizinosaurus back in the early 2000s, and initially didn't think it was real. That's just somebody's wild imagination of what a dinosaur looks like, is what I said basically. So you can imagine how dumb I looked when I found out that it was real. And, well, can you blame me? It just looks so insane, especially for a herbivore to have such long claws that almost look like they would have been a hindrance. One thing I would like to know is, was it a gentle giant or a territorial killer like it was in Dominion? This, to me, doesn't feel too far-fetched. Some herbivores can be very dangerous, such as hippos, buffalo, moose, even ones we think of as gentle giants like elephants can be very dangerous when they throw their weight around. So I'll leave you with this week's question. Do you feel that Edward Scissorhands, as some call him, was a peaceful browser that lived alongside its fellow herbivores? Or was it a dangerous species that others avoided when possible? Either way, Therizinosaurus is an incredibly unique extinct species. And I'm glad that the Jurassic series finally brought him to the general public's attention. What lesser known dinosaur would you like me to cover in a future episode? Until then, remember, don't run with scissors. No, seriously, come on now.